I'm Zachary Fowler, and you're watching Fowler's Makery and Mischief. We are on the ice. It is a beautiful day in Maine. And you know what? It's taken, let's see, it's the 23rd of January and I've only been able to be on the ice a couple times this year. I've caught a couple trout. Oh, it's a big one. Oh, that's worst, worst, <laughs> worst haul out ever. All right, beautiful brookie, yeehaw. First fish of the season, Saturday. Uh, three days ago or whatever, I went for a nice little ice fishing with some, met up with some friends from church and uh, their kids for a second and was hoping to get a trout, had a close call. Fish on. Ah, oh, bass. <laughs> well, looks like we're having perch for dinner. <laughs> And then we're gonna go up and work on the place some more. I'll show you all the modifications and improvements I've made over the fall, in which we've just been struggling with storm after storm. Mainers all across the state now are dealing with the aftermath. And we've got all kinds of neat projects to come this year, as well as getting out here and having some adventures in the good outdoors. So let's set some, uh, set some traps, see what we catch. Got my new jig board. You might recognize this from last time, but now it works like this where you it all collapses down to a half an inch it's got the hook setter right there and that goes up through the bottom like so and that moves out of the way and the bungee goes like that that holds your rod and before it was always like falling over when i catch a fish well now i got little wings that come out we'll set this up and see if we can't catch something on camera Old Jiffy. <laughs> Grab ourselves a little minnow. Hey, little fellas, who wants to play? Toss our minnow down there. Let's see, is there anything? Oh, there looks like there's stuff down there, too. I'll set this guy up. Turned out so good, I'm so happy about this. As I mentioned before, this is version two of the hook setting board I've designed on our Glowforge laser. Version one, we premiered in our seven day survival challenge with Amos Rodriguez during the Arctic blast. It worked good, but things kept popping apart and needed extra strings to hold it together. Version two has several modifications I've made that make it collapse down tighter, stay together when it's been disassembled, doesn't require extra strings to hold it in place, and it doesn't tip over because these pivoting arms that I've attached to the front of it. Front hook setter is made out of a piece of coat hanger and bent and tuned to hold the tip of the rod under tension until the fish's bite releases that tension, setting the hook in the fish's mouth. Set it right in there. Set that in there. She is good. There it is on the bottom. That little line there. And uh, she's all set. It's easy as that. So I go back and forth. I almost always do best with lipping them, but every once in a while I try to put a couple like this and see if I can't mentally decide whether I like in the spine or the lip better. Oh, something's coming up to meet it. Oh, fish on. <laughs> Didn't even get to set it down. Let's see what we got. It's a good tug. Oh, big old white perch, I bet. Yep. Nice white perch. Little throat rip. Throw him in the sled. Yee haw. There's one. Well, they'll definitely eat those small minnows, but I'm gonna put a big one back on. And see if there's a something bigger swimming through. We set our flag. Ah, 
All right, well, now our traps are set. We can do a little bit of work while we're uh, waiting to see if we catch a fish. I got my little bunky. This little shed is made by a company in Canada called Bunky Life. They sent us this outhouse slash shed along with a wood-fired hot tub and a beautiful tiny house I'm making into an office for my employees. Keep an eye open for the video on that coming soon to the Fowler Extra channel. After finding a spot that was a legal distance from the lake, I flattened out a small area and put down some driveway fabric, and then we brought down some of the extra gravel after we had top dressed the driveway. I had already rented a mini skid steer to top dress the driveway, and so I just drove down some of that extra material to make this nice and flat. The bunky cabins are a kit thing, so they come in a big bundle, and then you basically just get out the instructions and set them up just like you would any other set of Legos or Lincoln Logs. The only thing they don't come with is the initial base. You have to decide if you're going to put it on a slab or build your own wooden frame for it. But once that's done, the assembly goes really quickly and you don't even need a second set of hands. As long as you don't get distracted, you could put something like this together in a day. I haven't gotten to the roof yet. Um, the power pack did a great job on this. I was able to just bang out the rest of it and slap on the trim with the uh, some galvanized nails. And instead of going all crazy with screws, which was pretty cool, got it done quick. And uh, now the bathroom is all set to go. The composting toilet, unfortunately, is not doing a great job. So it's it's uh, it has pellets that are in there that um, are coconut husk that you swell up. And I guess I should have dried them more before I put them in here because right now you can't spin it. So you can't turn them in. I think I might have to build a winter winter composting toilet that you just sprinkle stuff on top of. So while we're waiting to catch a fish, I'm gonna mill up another piece of wood with my chainsaw mill, build my little workbench, hang up a couple tools. That way, if I need to sharpen my chainsaw, I have a place to go where I know my files are, things like that, and I can store, you know, a couple tools underneath and a couple tools on top, keep things organized. It'll be a multi-use little uh, storage shed slash bathroom house. I'm really psyched about this. I really love this thing. It went together so well and having my power pack in here. And I even brought up a solar panel from uh, another solar panel I had, which I love how just the same connector for the power pack, you know, is universal with just other brands. So I can screw that to the roof and my power pack will always be charged if I need to come in here and power a tool, charge up my tools while I'm working up here on the tiny house, which we got to get back on. That thing is getting snowed on. Fortunately, or unfortunately, because of everything being so warm winter-wise, we're gonna have a lot of 40 degree days coming, so I can be up there finishing that up and be able to move in before winter's out and, and spend time in there as well. But tonight we'll be down at the yurt over here, which I've had to rebuild several times this year because of weather, storms, the plastic getting ruined, the wood stove getting ruined, and now she's ready to go once again and have people spending the night in it and enjoying it and cooking in there. After replacing the moldy cotton insulation with foil bubble wrap insulation and putting the canvas back on, I did a white plastic roof instead of the original clear plastic roof, which I'm already regretting because it's not quite as bright in there. Piece of the old disassembled slingshot shooting range and made a nice plastic floor for it, which in the end just served to capture a bunch of water when we had a giant flood. But the e-taker for the win, I was able to use the wet dry vac with the e-taker to scrub and vacuum up all the water that was in there. And after a little bit of trenching, she's now ready to go. We also had to take the docks out way late in the year, which was, let me tell you, I had to buy a special wetsuit because I let it go so long. I wanted to have the dock there as long as possible. So now I have a wetsuit that's like eight mil and I can go in there in the middle of winter, which is super cool. And I might be able to use that wetsuit to do another, um, uh, hovercraft video so I can go across the water during the middle of winter if I fall in I'll be just fine this this year is the year of finishing things I got a lot of videos that I've got uh, like one or two more videos I wanted to do on each of them like another version of the hovercraft working better moving faster actually with a big fan on the back I got uh, the easy rider one when summer comes the glamper camper a winter version of that with skis and going behind the snow dog so it's gonna be the year of completing things and uh, not leaving things half undone right Let's do it.
a little wormier than the uh, piece that we got out of it earlier this year for the dock and stuff that was down lower. I wonder why that is. But that'll work great for the workbench, especially when I get a little bit more to the middle, I can get rid of more of this and stuff. It's just kind of sap wood and some of it's a little rotten. Nothing I can't just clean up with a, a pass with a skill saw. Let me just hew down the side of it real quick. This is gonna be great. With the remaining light, I managed to mill up three nice slabs of wood, plenty for my project and plenty for some extra projects. Unfortunately, the blade was getting dull and it was getting dark. I'd have to come back tomorrow to work on all this. So in the morning, I hopped back on the snow dog and headed in to finish my project. Well, I did finish everything I wanted to yesterday, so I decided to call it and got the traps back out on the ice this morning, this time down by the river uh, or stream that comes in. And uh, I can keep an eye on from right here. Check them with the glass and with the binoculars every 15 minutes or so, see if we can catch that trout. But while we're waiting for that, we'll keep an eye on those, clean this place out, and do that uh, little build I was talking about in here. And then we'll cook something into a, uh, a fish ragoon. And there is a little bit of snow coming down. It's supposed to be maybe six inches tonight. So it's the perfect time to spend the night in the yurt and do some cooking and adventuring in the outdoors. That's my favorite time to do it. Whenever it's stormy, I love to spend the night outside. There we go. So today's video is actually brought to you by our new E-Taker from E-Taker. You can check out that link in the description below. We did a little gear video too. Check out that link in the description for that. I think it's gonna live right here, either in this corner or the back corner, and I'll hook some solar to it. And this will be the power for here so we can flip on the light when you come in, use the bathroom, getting changed after dark, after being here all day swimming, as well as, you know, on this side, maybe I'll store my, somewhere in here, my tools on this side, and some, maybe some cooking implements or a box with some cooking stuff like spatulas for over the fire. You know, bring in my phone in here and charge it or bring in my tools and charge it. But I need a bench to put my tools on so I can charge them. So let's take some measurements. Let's see, 16 by 68 and 5 eighths, 68 and 3 quarters on the inside. Sixty-eight and three quarters. What do we got? Looks like that big knot's gonna be part of it. Seventy. Cleats for it. Perfect. I left that one a little bit long. It doesn't look as good that way, but I wanted something else besides just this to screw into to hang in heavier items right here. So I don't just have to drill into the side of that. So that's what that's for. I think the power pack should go over here. Random bucket from my workshop. You always need a bucket. Never know when you're gonna need one. All right, so the walls are one and an eighth before I go screwing stuff into the walls. Make sure I get that right. I think I'll get like a magnet strip for all the, just the little tools like this, like I have at home. So I can just be like, tunk, 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 tunk. And now I just need a little light right here. So at nighttime, I can plug it into here. Some sort of shop light or something. It'd be nice. Maybe even put it on a motion sensor. So that when I come in, it turns on for the bathroom. Cool.
while I was building my dream shed, the snow continued to come down outside. I had brought some of my guys down to the ice to keep an eye on the traps while I was working. Although I'm not sure they were the most reliable help. I feel like something could be popped and I just don't even know. Is there supposed to be tension? We did have one flag, but it turned out to be a lot of nothing, and we still had the minnow, so we just reset it and ordered some sandwiches for lunch. Meatball. Nice, thanks. There you go. And John filmed for his skating channel, Skating the Line. Check him out if you dare. John lost a meatball on the ice. This can go in your video. We're not putting this in my video. <laughs> we have we have more we have more class. Eventually, though, after days of waiting, our time on the ice finally paid off with a serious bite. Oh. There it is. We got one. It looks like a big one. No? No, it, it pulled out a bunch of line, I think. Oh, they pulled out line? Oh, we got it. Yeah, it's like chest it. Oh, 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 this is what I was waiting for. Yes! <laughs> We're having our trout. We're gonna have trout now. Look at that. Yes, this is my first trout on my lake this year. He's really, he's really hooked in the li lower lip. I need to get my fingers out. Yeah, look at that color. Look at that. Look at that. Oh, and he feels pretty firm too. So, beautiful brookie. Look at that. That is, uh, I mean, that, see there's a tank fin right there. So it's a stocked trout, but at the same time, I don't know how big and stuff he is and how firm. I wonder if he's from this the last year's like smaller ones that were stocked or, or it could be this year's. He's just doing really good. Now we can make some smoked, smoked trout ragoons. So we're gonna have to work on that, finish up, uh, finish up the little shed, and uh, we'll put this on to smoke in the morning, and uh, keep building some stuff for the, the shelter, and spend the night, and make our ragoons tomorrow. I think since we spent so much day building and goofing around on the ice. Oh, what a beautiful fish! We got our trout, we got our little workshop. Oh, this day is shaping up to be a wonderful day. Ah, oh, so much work to catch that one fish, I tell ya. But it is beautiful. Alright, finish up here. Too cool for school. Too cool. Yeehaw, it turned out so good. I am so happy with this. This is so cool. The E taker's right there. I got power. It's just a simple push of the button and then a push of the button. And the light, I'll just leave it on. I still have plenty of space in here to put like another shelving unit, somewhere to hang coats and some towels and things, and having the skill saw down here, so I don't have to worry about bringing my cordless one down every single time when I'm like down here for a three hour period with the kids, we went swimming, now they're like playing in the woods and I want a little bit of, just I just wanna nip something up, make something small, make some small project, make another little table. I got my power pack, I'll be able to do it. And uh, powering in my ventures, power your adventure. Check them out, link is in the description below. For how much power this thing puts out, it's crazy small, 60% smaller than others of its capacity, while also being 30% lighter and 60% quieter. It can also run in temperatures as low as minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit, which we're not gonna do today, but it is pretty cold nonetheless. So check out eTaker, linked in the description below if you wanna see our gear video on that as well that's linked down there but this thing is competitively priced on amazon really well made i'm loving it it can run the power tools it's got twice as many ac outlets as 
pretty much all the other um, 2000 watt and smaller power packs on the market as well as having four USB and two USB C's which is um, two more uh, USB type outlets than most other power packs on the market as well as some DC outlets there everything you need to power your adventure the only thing that limits you is your imagination oh, <laughs> oh, oh, it's nothing, <laughs> so check them out and let's get on with our adventure we're gonna go and uh, tidy up the yurt spend the night and do some cooking in the morning I did a, could have done better with a fillet knife. Look at that. Nice fillets. Definitely not the right knife for it, but we can put those on there now. Huh. I'll let that smoke for a couple hours and let's see what's inside of his stomach. Oh man, I was like, his stomach is chocked full of stuff. Yeah, it's chocked full of something already. Dang, I hate to see that. Here's a big old soft plastic. Like, he must have had to digest past that the entire time. This big old piece of soft plastics. Try not to lose your soft plastics, guys. You know? If you feel like they're coming off the hook, it's better to throw them away. Apparently, it didn't hurt him too much because he wasn't desiccated. I have caught one before that had three in him, and he was kind of thinner and... And stuff, that one seemed pretty plump, so... That seems to be a lot of fat right there, so he seemed like he was doing okay. I just... That's kind of sad to see. So, there's quite a bit of uh, calories still right there. If I were to uh, be in a survival situation, I'd totally rinse that out and make a soup with that. And the head, which I did put on there, coincidentally. I try to once a year have fish head soup as in memory of uh, all the 87 days of fish head soup I had on Alone Season 3. And, like having to survive off of it. So I'll put this in the trash and put this over here on the ice. Maybe uh, maybe the birds will want it. Make some rice to go with my Rangoons. <laughs> Making rice in the, out at the lake. In my, in my bathroom. <laughs> Is that gross? There we go, load it up for the last run of it. Let a little bit more smoke. It's been about two hours, and uh, I think we need to go shoot the slingshot. It's been a little while. It's not so cold out today, and there's all kinds of targets around here that I uh, haven't shot since fall. So let's see what we can do. I got my sparrow that uh, Simple Shot made me. This is a uh, G10 one. It turned out beautiful. I love it. We haven't put it into full production yet, though, so I don't know if we're going to or not. So you can't get one right yet but let's go plink some targets let's see
spin a little bit. Birdie. Nice. There it is. Let's go down over the hill where it's not so noisy. That was awesome. Well, those definitely haven't cooked, but they have smoked up. They look pretty nice. They're a little darker. That'll do. Now we'll cook them up and then turn them into our robber and goons. Whew. Kind of been sitting there for a while. Uh, mm. That's not good. What is that? Just a big frozen chunk of ice. What's in the ice though? Uh, who knows? <laughs> Maybe stew? Maybe uh, whatever we cooked in it last, but slacking. Oh, that got the pan clean though. A pork chop or uh, <laughs> something's floating in that. Here, uh. curling with the pork chop. We'll just leave that for the uh, raccoons. Do our vegetables and our trout. Right. Some veggies for our stir fry. A little bit more skin side down. They're gonna be the best thing ever, or it's gonna be okay. But it's not gonna be bad, that's for sure. All right, green onions, Worcestershire sauce, the old soy sauce. Trying to overdo it. There's one. See if this works. Oh, ho, ho, ho. would you look at that? Oh, those are beautiful. Uh, where'd that fork go? Ah, whatever. Fingers. Vegetables. These golden babies. And then, a little sweet chili sauce. Wow, we actually made quite a few of these. Yeah, Matt. From one trout, how many is that? One, two, three, five, tw 20, 20, 20, 20, <laughs> I don't know. Five, 20, 21. Here's yours, John. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. And here's one for you, Noah. Thanks. Lord, thank you for this food. Thank you for the trout. Bless this food to our body. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, cheers. Think, think. Here we go. That is so different. Right? It tastes nothing like a crab. <laughs> Rangoon. <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like salmon cream cheese to me. Yeah. Isn't, do you notice that? Like I never get smokiness when I eat crab rangoon, so that makes a huge impact on me. Yeah, it, it tastes like smoked salmon cream cheese, like with a fried shell of, you know. You ever had salmon pate? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're getting? Kind of, yeah. I mean, my least favorite part of Chinese food is uh, crab rangoons. <laughs> really? To be honest. Wow. Yeah. In part because it, it just feels like they're filled with cream, cream cheese. Cream cheese. Mm -hmm. Whereas these feels like they're, it's more of like a 
you know, fish pate type of thing, which I prefer. I prefer these to crab rangoons. Mm -hmm. Any crab rangoon that I've had, I, I would prefer these to that. I'm gonna wrap it up, clean up this food. And uh, spend the first night in the yurt for a while after these guys leave. I'll have some quiet time and have some time to myself. I gotta finish tidying it up in there. And I'm gonna spend the night out here and maybe even get out in the morning and try to catch another trout. Dear Diary, uh, hmm. uh, I've read that there was over like 41,000 Chinese restaurants in the United States alone. I love Chinese food. I used to go like once a week to the Chinese buffet after church every week. And every time somebody new would come along, the topic would come up again that this is not real Chinese food. Chinese food is healthy. This is a greasy American version designed to trap Americans into eating gluttonous amounts of this. And real Chinese food is healthy and awesome. And we're missing out and we have no idea. I wonder if there's restaurants in China called American restaurants with greasy versions of already greasy foods from America. Well, no fish yet. It's been a beautiful, beautiful uh, fall and Christmas time, taking a little bit of time to myself, as well as trying to finish some things so we're super prepared for winter because um, we have now two parts to winter, slush season for two months, and then actual winter, which starts in January, around January uh, 18th, of, unfortunately. But we're on the ice, it's thick enough, it looks like it's going to stay thick enough, we'll be able to have new adventures. Um, we got to finish a bunch of things, you know, the tiny house, the tiny houseboat, the easy rider, a lot of things... Uh, got messed up in the last couple years, but uh, it's gonna be some real fun finishing those and some new things going and doing a boar hunt out west with Greg in uh, in a couple months some fun stuff there and uh, I'm really Feeling pretty good about it. I was feeling pretty uh, Dejected honestly like with the making of this video because it took so long There were so many complications so many storms so many things that needed doing you know the more you own the more it tends to own you, right? And so, if you're wise, you know, don't buy too many things and don't get too spread out so you have more time for your family, your loved ones. And uh, and, and also, I prioritized my time with the Lord and things a lot too. So I get up earlier every day and get more done in studying and, uh, and reading lately. I'll put a little list on the screen. Here's a couple of my top recommendations of some books that I've... Uh, just been tearing through the books lately on Audible. I would start with The Traveler's Gift. It's not a Christian book per se. It does have some biblical principles in it, but they're just principles like that and it doesn't bring them up as biblical principles. So as a Christian, I feel like those things, I've been studying these seven decisions that come from the book uh, to more understand, you know, how to have, why I've been successful and why I've failed in certain areas of my life. Uh, Self-discovery, very important thing. Instead of just sitting down 
all the time in front of the TV and things like that. So if you are interested in doing more with your life this year, start with reading some of these books, listening to some of these books on Audible, whatever it takes, and uh, check out getting yourself a journal and just journaling out some of these things each day. It might just be just write one or two words about what you read and what you thought that that meant to you. And I promise you that will enrich your life and, uh, and pray about it and seek God for it too. And, uh, and he can reveal to you where you have been, uh, you know, maybe, uh, you know, stepping on your own toes, I guess, you know, would be a good way to put it. And, uh, and holding yourself back from, from being able to accomplish more in life. So I'm going to fish for a bit longer. Hopefully we can still catch one last fish before I got to pack it up and go back and work on the final cut of this edit. So you guys are able to watch this as you are now. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one for all kinds of new fun adventures. Thanks for watching. Fowler out. Sean. Ha <laughs> Oh. White perch. Ha <laughs> ha, I didn't get skunk. <laughs> Those taste pretty good. Breakfast and lobster bait. Thank you, Lord. Thanks for watching, guys.